Greetings, I'm Chevalier, and I bid you welcome to Institution and Guide of the Oriat. Oriat is, as I said before, quite a tricky nation to play as, quite easy in the early game, although the horde is gonna become uh, uh, difficult as uh, the time progresses. So, let's just delve into the actual conquest. So, uh, your first rivals, this is the standard lineup for rivals Uzbek, Chagatai, and Korchen. Uh, better option for rivals, though it's a little bit more tricky to pull off, is uh, Boratsa, Korchin and uh, Chagatai. And um, yeah, that is pretty much any ally of the team where it's not gonna watch your back if the Uzbeks want to attack you or Ming wants to attack you. So, first attack is against Korchin for the quarter that Mongolia has, and then take some lands from Korchin as well. Uh, recommend, recommend taking Holombuir and uh, Onagol. Then attacking Borussia and uh, taking lands from the Masul and feeding to Mongolia. Then attacking here in Haixi and Jozo, pretty much focusing on the east side. Yeah, if you do not want to focus on the east, uh, east side, on the east side of things, uh, after you attack, attacked Korchin, Borussia, you can focus on Chagatai, then attacking Chagatai and releasing uh, Kazakh. But let's focus on the east side first. Uh, we'll talk about the, the actual ears and what is the best option to progress for it. Uh, although there are many options and uh, most of them seem equal, there are some small differences uh, that can be accounted for. So, Korchin, Borussia, Yer, and Haixi, Janzo, Korea. Pretty much standard stuff. Uh, Yer, Haixi, Janzo, Korea easily, to, uh, easily killed. Korchin might get an, ally, uh, an alliance with Janzo, but they usually won't be able to get access to Haixi or Yer, and you just want the, the Mongolian core back. And uh, as well as some lands from Korchin, so that can get the C so you can get a CB against Borussia and Yern. Pretty standard. Next, Yern is he's not going to have an alliance with Haixi and Jianzhou. Perhaps only Korea, but again they're going to be blocked, easily killed. With Haixi is the same, and Jianzhou is the same. Korea is the same. They usually don't get any allies, so they're easily killed, like easily land grabbed on the east side. With Chagatai here. Remember that they have uh, vastly near can, so they might be problematic. Uh, they will not ally use Uzbek as in the previous patches, so they're easily killed. Remember that Yerkan is loyal, so they might pose a little bit of a problem. Try to build up your force limit to some degree before you can actually uh, before you actually attack Chagatai here. And once you've taken uh, attack Chagatai and taken some lands from Chagatai, release Kazakh here. That he'll be your vassal. Once you have released Kazakh, feed him lands. Try to keep some lands for yourself so they can actually, so you can actually take lands from this side. Then attack the Uzbeks. Uh, same stuff. Uh, give course back to the to the uh, to the Kazakh. Then attack uh, Nongai, Kaz uh, Kazan, and Great Horde. Pretty much standard standard stuff here. This whole war and uh, this whole expansion is gonna take you, I'll say, 50 to 60 years. It's probably gonna be until the 1500s. I don't know the exact timetable, but it should be easily achieved with no actual issues. Uh, the main problem here is the Uzbeks, but if you allow the Timurids, they're gonna be easily squashed. Just give one land to the Timurids and take the less for yourself. Although remember that if the Timurids have uh, more participation than you, they're gonna have less uh, trust with you. That I might want. That I might break the alliance. So try to be careful in that area there. So if at all possible, try to attack the Uzbeks with your own troops, especially if you might have the extra military tech uh, over them. Uh, if you actually get here and you actually core one land, uh, that will allow you to actually get... I don't think you, that even, you need to even need to core it, you just need to own it with feudalism. So if you have feudalism, you'll be able to easily gain uh, gain uh, the, the tech cost reduction and you're gonna be... Uh, you're gonna be able to, let's say, get two to maybe, I'll say, two techs uh, over those packs. Then you can easily squash them, especially if they're the, the techs that give you the uh, discipline. So, quite easily done. Pretty much easy as play. So, uh, another option here, if you have the time, just going to India slowly and slow, uh, slowly, slowly, slowly up to, up to Bengal and uh, have another vassal in Bengal. So, all of these vassals are gonna cause problems for you uh, with, uh, I'll say, no, uh, this thing here, Liberty Desire. So try to be really careful of how many vassals you have. Uh, try to annex them as soon as possible and try not to go as uh, more than two vassals, basically, because having three vassals 
with uh, the new uh, the new thing here with development that is going to give you 0.25 the Liberty Desire Pro development and if you give them uh, I don't know, 100 to 200 development uh, you're going to be hard pressed to keep them in check yeah, especially if they're a horde and that's going to be one problematic now let's go into the mid game here in the mid game you should focus on trying to kill Ming. If Ming is broken into pieces you'll be able to attack them earlier on. But if not try to have about 40,000 troops and try to have cannons as well. Uh, basically a row, of a row of cavalry or a row of artillery that is going to allow you to kill Ming. As well as having uh, perhaps two techs over Ming as well. That's going to be nice. If it's not possible try to basically hold your tongue and hold your armies. Uh, at bay against Ming until they have problems or you have more troops so that you can actually easily squash them. I can kill Ming with 40,000 troops at minimum uh, for you by be you might be more troops. The Tamers here might die from Persia. That means that you're gonna lose your uh, you're gonna lose your ally. Uh, you're gonna be remain with your oh, with your vassal which are gonna which they're gonna be quite annoying so uh, if at all possible and you see that demons are going to break away and they're gonna die Rival them, kill them, pretty some of the stuff. Uh, Moscovy here as well, try to attack them as early as possible so that you can actually gain uh, more uh, lands and keep them in check. Uh, but I recommend that I think that you're gonna be able to reach the border in Moscovy in 40 years and you can launch a preemptive strike against Moscovy so you can actually kill them earlier on. Karl is gonna be killed by the Ottomans and the Timurids. Uh, Pretty much it. Uh, I will say that by the f oh India as well. I mean India should easily expand into India. It's pretty much a horde expansion, like quite aggressive horde expansion. Now this is gonna cause problems mainly because in these patches you're gonna have problems with the states here, uh, and because you have, don't have the necessary number of states, you're gonna have issues with those states and you're gonna have enough cash you're gonna have to rely on taking lands from your taking cash from the enemies and the the cash from your vassals which is not gonna be enough plenty of issues and problems with the horde but remember expand as fast as possible and as soon as possible although it's gonna be to your own to your own detriment detriment you have no other way to play just expand as a madman if you want to pull some stuff up you can actually try to increase the this stuff here in the the steps or perhaps the, the the woods here or perhaps I don't know here in so that you can actually get the what's it called the institutions faster and that might be doable as well but remember that you're gonna have to to get pretty much tons of land uh, tons of land tons of uh, Development so that you actually can get the situations quite fast, but it might be worth it. It might not be worth it Depends on your own point of view. I would actually do it. I mean you have nothing to lose The only issue is that uh, there are no lands that are part of your own culture that Are easily basically increased like everything here sucks except uh, for example the regions here basically in uh, What's it called? What's the region called? In uh, well, Aries and Fergana basically. Those regions are the only ones that can be, let's say, uh, quite cheaply upgraded. By cheaply is a matter of uh, of a term. They're still gonna cost you 1k, I guess, develop uh, 1k points perhaps for total to actually get the, the Renaissance there. Remember that uh, getting feudalism and embracing any other institution is gonna cost you cash which is gonna cause you even more problems so uh, pretty much a headache for the hordes the paradox has sucked the life out of the hordes quite a lot uh, with this uh, the uh, dispatches basically like the states the states and the the states uh, the states are okay I guess but the states really really crushed the the especially with the institutions I mean you get some bonuses in, bonuses in the early game but uh, uh, the embrace uh, the uh, to embrace the institution is really gonna kill your your overall uh, not manpower overall uh, capital basically but yeah remember that hordes are 
quite hard to play as uh, or later on if you have a, a multi cultural and uh, a religious empire. Yeah, remember the Ottomans. See you next time. Ciao.